It's Act 3! Yes, it is. Of the podcast! Hooray! We have made it to Act 3, the main course, the main event, the main some third thing. And I am really, really, really excited to be here today talking about this week's movie, Why You May Ask. It's simple. This week's movie is the perfect time for me, Reverend Steve, the founder of the Church of Ed Wood, to finally have a chance to preach and proselytize at you about the one true religion, buddy, the one true religion out there. So, young man, let me... Let me turn this chair around and <laughs> turn my baseball cap around, roll up my sleeves, and let you and I rap a bit about what's cool and dope and wiggity fresh, yo. So sheezy. <laughs> Look, I know what you're going through, Bunny. Yes. Your body is changing. You're young. <laughs> Your voice is changing. And now there's hair on your coin purse. Your your hormones are bubbling like your intestines after eating Chipotle. This is a difficult time for you, Bunny. I know because I have been there as well. I was confused, too. I was confused, too. But you know what brought me comfort, Bunny? What? I found comfort in the arms of a wild, long-haired man with facial hair and a robe and some crazy ideas about being nice to one another. (laughs) And that man's name was Qui-Gon Jinn. Yes. This is how it works. God wrote the Old Testament. Then he caved to pressure from his from his publicist and wrote a sequel called the new pub the new testament Uh then he took a long break and when he finally came back he wrote the star wars prequels and that is the only real religion money the only true religion and let's face facts okay the new testament is two thousand years old okay yeah it's not exactly new anymore all right yeah. It's time for a newer New Testament, and that is the Star Wars prequels. Every morning, praying to Jar Jar Binks has given me true peace of mind. Yes. And every night before bed, the kids and I gather around the fireplace. Well, we don't have a fireplace, so we gather around the stove and we discuss important things. Like the marriage of Anakin and Amidala or the Battle of Naboo. And it has really brought us together. But not my wife, Natasha. She is a Seventh-day Decepticon now. And that bitch is dead to me. She is (laughs) dead to me. These two religions cannot coincide together. (laughs) I'm going to say that she's laughing at my amazing writing and move on. And speaking of religions, this week's movie is a legendary 1973 musical film that is near and dear to my heart. Jesus Christ Superstar, or as it's called in Spanish, El Jesus Christ Superstaros. <laughs> also, and also, I don't know Spanish. And if you assume that I do know Spanish, then you're racist as hell. You really should check yourself. lest you wreck yourself. This is a polarizing film. It has a 7.3 out of 10 on IMDb, which is fairly respectable. uh, That's definitely um, not in Adam Sandler range. Yes. But then you go to Rotten Tomatoes, and it has a 55% right now. Really? Like, like what the fuck? 55 to 7 out of 10. That's a wildly different score there, you know? Yeah. So I guess you either just love Jesus Christ Superstar or you absolutely hate Jesus Christ Superstar to death. Where where do you fall on this uh, Jesus Christ Superstar spectrum, buddy? Oh, I I, I love it. I I like the album better. Yeah. You know, but um, 
of which I wore out a couple of copies. Yeah. Um, but I love it for a lot of reasons. Um, but he is a mopey ass Jesus. Yes. Yeah. You know. Yes, he is. So if you're yeah. coming for Jesus, um, I could see why they don't like it. I the thing the thing the thing that's interesting that's a negative, but I can also see it as a positive in the sense that this is a musical about the Bible called Jesus Christ Superstar, but Jesus isn't the best part of it. No. You know, th there's something to be admired about that. Mm -hmm. Oh, I love Jesus Christ Superstar. Yeah, is Jesus good in it? Oh, no, he's horrible, but <laughs> it, this play isn't about Jesus. Word. Now, um... But he could hit a high note. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah. Do you know anything about musical notes, Bunny? Uh, a tiny bit. Like what? Um, when Jesus sings the song Gethsemane, he hits a G above high C. Oh, is that what was being talked about earlier? A G above high C. Yeah, um, and I, I I know nothing about musical notes. I don't know how impressive that is. I know it sounds impressive. So if you have a musical stanza, okay, you know what I'm talking about. The, when you write it on paper. Yeah. Okay. Uh huh. It is. It, it, if you put another stanza then directly on on top of it, that would be like kind of just above that. Okay. Then that's pretty insane. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. No. I'm gonna start this off in a weird way. I did a lot of research for this. I researched the director and the people who starred in it. And, of course, uh, Andy Lo Lloyd Webber, yes. who wrote the original musical. We share a birthday, by the way. I'm always proud of that did every you year. Did him Andy Lloyd Webber? Yeah, Andy Lloyd Webber. Him, him and I are close. So you know, because we share the same birthday. So friends, much love. So, so Andy Lloyd Webber. And uh, while researching this... I found a weird fact, but I didn't find a way to put it into the podcast, so I thought I'd just mention it right here in the beginning. So Andrew Lloyd Webber is looking for new musical ideas, uh -huh. and then he says, I know what my next big budget Broadway musical is going to be about. Thomas the Tank Engine. <laughs> oh. He really He's one hundred percent convinced that he can write a wonderful, award-winning, successful Thomas the Tank Engine musical. So he goes and meets a uh, W. H. Audrey or whatever the name is of the guy who wrote the Thomas the Tank books forever ago and he's this stuffy british guy and they're talking and andrew lloyd weber andy is really excited about writing a thomas the tank engine musical but eventually the guy who owns thomas the tank engine says okay i've got to decline because i love these characters thomas and percy and sir topham hat these are important <laughs> characters to me and this andy lord weber guy he wants to do whatever he wants with my characters, my creations, so I will not allow him to do a Thomas the Tank Engine musical. So so uh, Andrew Lloyd Webber says, fine, I'll just do it without Thomas the Tank Engine. And he writes Starlight Express. <laughs> a musical about trains where all of the actors are on roller skates and roller skating around the set. <laughs> nice. But originally, that musical, Starlight Express, was going to be a Thomas the Tank Engine musical. Awesome. And when I first heard this, I said, oh my god, that's ridiculous and stupid. How could anyone do this? But then I realized that the Jack, the Jack Black movie, Rock of Ages... Uh huh. No, no, no. School of Rock. School the of Jack Rock. White, the Jack Black films. Oh my God, Rock of, Rock of Ages. 
could have been so much better with Jack Black. Yeah. Um, it would have been a more comfortable makeout scene with Jack Black and Jack Donaghy. <laughs> yeah, no, he would have. I was just oh about to say God. he would have been great in that role. What's going on with Bella? She didn't want the baby to pee on the floor. Pee! Oh, the baby peed on the floor. Of no, course. The baby didn't pee on the floor. Oh, she doesn't want the baby to pee on the floor. Yes. Ten four. Um. <laughs> she was saying Kofifi. You know what? I'm I'm gonna stop paying attention to you guys. Um. Anyway, uh, Andrew Lloyd Webber's last musical is it, it, on Broadway right now, and it's a musical version, a big-budget Broadway musical version of the Jack Black film School of Rock. Oh, man. And apparently it's fucking wonderful. Really? But, but the idea that Andrew Lloyd Webber can get a Jack Black movie and turn it into a musical. I'm like, okay, now that guy I can see making a Thomas the Tank Engine musical. Yeah. You know? That's weird. That is weird. He also wrote a sequel to Phantom of the Opera, which is really bizarre. Yeah? Yeah, it's called Love Never Dies, and it's hard to find, but it, it, yeah, it's some weird stuff. That's not the big yeah. famous Phantom of the Opera, is it? What? That's not the big famous Phantom of the Opera, is it? Oh no, it is. It is the big. It is the big famous Phantom of the Opera. Okay. I have watched. Yeah, no. Uh, Andrew Lloyd Webber wrote the musical Phantom of the Opera, the big Phantom of the Opera, and Cats. He wrote Cats. He wrote Cats. Okay. Memories. Midnight. That fucking song. <laughs> uh huh. So, I love Jesus Christ Superstar. I love this mu movie, and I love this musical. And I'll explain why. In fact, this whole movie choice was just an excuse for me to discuss my own personal shit. Don't worry, Jesus Christ Superstar fans out there. We will discuss this film in eventually to appease the fandom. But how did I first become aware of Jesus Christ Superstar? Two words. B. Arthur. B. Arthur. Yeah. Okay. Growing up, my dad was never around and my mom didn't want to be a parent. So I spent my childhood glued to a television set. Yeah. I watched a lot of TV shows. And back then, you could still see old school TV shows. I don't know where you could see My Two Dads nowadays. Yeah. Or, uh, no, uh, My Three Sons. Like, where can you see Gilligan's Island anymore? You know? Yeah. Mr. Ed. I don't know where you could find this, but I watched a lot of old school TV shows as a young child. My Three Sons, The Jeffersons, The Donna Reed Show. I was in love with Gidget. <laughs> so much. I'm still in love with Gidget. Mr. Ed I, I had done. Father's no Father Knows Best. Father Knows Best, yeah. Obviously, Miss Leave it to Beaver. Another, I, so I loved Gidget. Another person that I loved was but they're cousins, identical cousins, something, something. No, I need it. Patty Duke. An Emerald Pax. Yeah, right. The Patty Duke Show. And, and I was trying to remember the theme song to the Patty Duke Show, and I, I wrote all my notes. But they're cousins. But then I went, okay, maybe I'm remembering this wrong. <laughs> But identical cousins aren't a thing. So I went to YouTube, and there's a shit ton of full episodes of the Patty Duke show. And I watched, like, the first five minutes, and it's like, oh, yeah, identical cousins. And I said that out loud, and I went, huh, identical cousins. And Natasha's like, what are you talking about? That's not a thing. That's not a thing at all. But it is. Identical cousins. 100% identical cousins. Not how it works. And we and have I video proof. Yeah, we have video proof. Nice. You see the you see the woman on the screen that has her back turned? She looks identical to the person who's facing the camera. That's right. Okay, if I I watched I watched that episode and I got to tell you it was impressive how 
much of a pain in the ass it must have been to film that show. Yeah. It was impressive to see the like split screen work and then you know they they have a, a vague look alike with her back turned and then when she talks it's a close up of Patty Duke. It's, it had to have been a huge pain in the ass. Yeah. And 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 uh, it's amazing to to find out that how they literally did shit like that back in the way is hold up a black curtain so that part of the film doesn't get exposed. Yeah. Yeah. Like, man, yeah. that's that's easy and explains a lot of things. Like, you would always have a weird colored line going down the center, usually. Probably not oh. in Patty Duke. I think Patty Duke was a lot better at it by then. Yeah. Yeah, but... Anyway, Patty Duke show. Absolutely fascinating. And a number of these old shows in the 70s would have episodes that either mentioned Jesus Christ Superstar or had Jesus Christ Superstar as some sort of a plot. Uh huh. I remember good times. There was one episode where the, the mom and the dad, and like, I don't know, like a sister or a friend or something, they were discussing the controversy. Will we go and see it? Ooh. Should we go and see this film? And then there was Mod. There was it was uh, Jesus Christ Superstar was also on an episode of Mod really? because yeah, B Arthur and his uh, porn stashed husband or whatever. Uh-huh. Go on a date night to go see Jesus Christ Superstar. Oh, we're going to see Jesus Christ Superstar tonight. We'll be back later. We're having a date night. My husband, I don't know, John Boy and I are going to see Jesus Christ Superstar. Oh, you're going to see Jesus Christ Superstar? Yes, we're going to see Jesus Christ Superstar. <laughs> so because of Mod and because of Mod and because of Florida, I became aware of Jesus Christ Superstar at a very early age. So I'm like six, seven years old. And I'm all, what's what the hell is Jesus Christ Superstar and why is it controversial? Why is something with Jesus' name in it controversial? I'm I'm so yeah. confused so it's difficult for me to think about my childhood because a lot of it because time is like a boomerang and you throw it you throw this time is like a boomerang so you throw the boomerang expecting to catch it but you're unaware that um the boomerang takes a long time to fly and then when it finally comes back at you um the wind has shifted it and it comes and directly it directly hits you in the fucking balls. Yes. Yes indeed. And that is Yeah, and that is time. So it's difficult for me to think about growing up because um growing up, I was a hyperactive little little uh, uh jerk that would never stop talking. Go figure. I just, would, <laughs> I just wouldn't stop talking. I would just start talking and making up things and I just wanted to be heard. Huh, does that sound familiar? Oh, not really. <laughs> and I always wanted to watch TV, and I would go through all the VHS tapes we had and watch movies that we had recorded, and, and I was always fighting my brother for the TV set. We were always fighting for control of the television. Huh, does that sound familiar? No, I don't think so. So <laughs> my parents, my parents who weren't known for spending a whopping buttload on us kids, Plopped down $100 and got me a TV VCR combo from my room. Why? Because they obviously loved me. Uh, that's what I would have to say, yeah. And also because they didn't want to spend any time with me. So I quickly became a, 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 a TV explorer. You know, I would have my TV, the TV guide was my best friend, and I'd go through that. Yeah. <laughs> That was a visual thing, honey, and I'm, I, you know, it doesn't really work for the podcast. So what you're trying to explain to me is that the baby pinched her own nipple and then cried about it. Yes, and then made me kiss it to make her feel better. Oh, okay. Wow, does that work? Can I start pinching various things of mine? I mean, I don't know how well it'll work because it's not going to get me to kiss it. Oh, lame. You're lame. lame. You're lame. I never, I never said I was anything other than that. So I never agreed. Hmm. So, 
you know, I, I, I would be like pouring through the TV guide. Once we got the TV guide, I would grab that TV guide and be pouring through it. And I'm like, ooh, okay. So Sunday at one in the afternoon, they're showing House of Frankenstein. Yeah. And I'd just be, oh, yeah. I, I was TV explorer. And I would be staying up and watching things. And even would though you I save, had school would you in the save morning, like clippings? I used to take clippings out of TV guide and save them. Nope, nope, Eleanor. No, I wouldn't do that. Eleanor is crying because I caught her throwing away one of our cups in the trash, and I got it out of the trash, and now she's crying because yeah, she's put upset. Put it in the trash instead, Bella. Good job on that. Yeah. No, I, I moved that for a reason. Okay. So one night, so one night at hey, midnight, they. <laughs> You can't throw away our cups. This is why we don't have spoons. Don't think I forgot the spoons. We need spoons. You are crying because you want to throw away cups. You want to throw away cups? Yeah, you're shaking your head yes. Yeah, well, you can't. You can't throw that away. You're supposed to put it in the sink, not the trash, the sink. Come here. I'll hold you. And you're going to cry the whole way over here. Yep. You know, Jesus wouldn't like this, Eleanor. My podcast should be a house of prayer. I hey, you want booby? Okay, gotta stop crying. I want booby. Stop crying. There you go. So one night at midnight on Phoenix UHF channel 45, at midnight, they showed Jesus Christ Superstar, and I, I was like 10. And yeah. I'm like, oh, this is my chance. So I stay up and I watch Jesus Christ Superstar, and the next morning I actually ask my mom and dad if Jesus had a bus. <laughs> I was confused. Like, just, did Jesus have a bus? No, Stevie, why would you say that Jesus doesn't have a bus? Well, I was watching this movie last night, and Jesus and Judas, and they were in a bus, and they were all sweaty, and then they, they, they got <laughs> stuff off of the top of the bus. And then Judas went up to a mountain, and then he started singing. <laughs> My parents didn't give a fuck. They had no idea what I was talking about. Out. Yeah. Wasn't that originally Ben Vereen? Yeah, look at him. Yeah, yeah. Originally, it was supposed to be Ben Vereen, but then he got sick. Oh. And so, from this point on, I was just obsessed with Jesus Christ Superstar. Yeah. I was at that perfect age to fall in love with this musical, because if I was older... Or a teenager or 20-something, and I watched Jesus Christ Superstar for the first time. I probably would have hated it. Yeah. Probably. You know? So growing up, so so this is where it gets a bit more personal. Growing up, I had this friend named Albert. Uh-huh. And it, uh, Names have been changed to protect the innocent. He was a... Uh, fellow Latino that is kind of struggling to understand what it means to be a Latino. Right. And in retrospect, he was obviously trying to come out to me. Okay. And I just had no clue. There was even a part <laughs> when we were, there was even a part in eighth grade where uh, Alex, where, 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 where Albert, it, he invited all of his friends to a sleepover at his house. And when we got there, we asked, oh, hey, Albert, do you have any movies? And he goes, no, why don't we watch this? It's the last episode of of General Hospital. It's really funny. This one teenage kid is trying to come out to his friends because he's gay. <laughs> it's really funny. Let's watch it and quote it all the time. And I love this so much. You're going to think it's so funny. <laughs> okay. And he, he would spend all of his time with me, and he was always ridiculously kind to my mom. And uh -huh. 
we would go out and spend all this time together. And in retrospect, he was trying to come out to me, but I'm not good with signals. Yeah. Who? Albert. Okay. Albert. That was his Albert. name? Yeah. So he one day he bought us both tickets, really good tickets to go see Jesus Christ Superstar Live. It was a touring company featuring the original Jesus and Judas from the movie, as well as Pontius Pilate, played by Dennis DeYoung from the band Styx. Is that who that was? No, no. That's who played him in the touring version that I saw with Albert. Okay. Yeah, he would be good. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't realize it at the time, but apparently this touring version that yeah. that I that Albert and I saw was the longest running revival in theater history. It started touring America in 1992 and was so successful that it continued until it finally ended in 1997. Wow! So Jesus, Judas, and Jesus were just touring all over America to basically every major and some minor cities doing this musical over and over again. And yeah, I've said this story before. I've said it a million times. Um, During the temp, a a few days before, Uh a few days before we went to see it. And I think we saw it in 96. Yeah. A few days before we saw it, we, we did the math and we're like, okay, so Jesus Christ Superstar came out in 1973 and, uh, okay, so 1973, then 83, 93, 94, 95, 96, so that's 23 years after the film. Now, let's just be nice and say that they were 25 when they made this film. Yeah. Uh, so they're all going to be in their 50s. I'm hot. You are. Shut it's Ridiculous. So these people are all going to be pretty darn old. But but Albert said, no, it's fine. You know, they were all young. My mom, too. My mom were like, oh, Stevie. Oh, Stevie. They were all like 17 when they made that film. They were so young. <laughs> well, apparently they were in their late 20s and early yeah. 30s because we saw some old ass Jesus and Judas. <laughs> and during the temple scene, my temple should be a house of prayer all the people are partying in the temple and there's drugs and hookers and apparently submachine guns yeah Mm -hmm. and mirrors so many mirrors so then jesus gets all pissed and he destroys the temple he comes in on stage he sees the temple he goes my temple should be a house of prayer Step, 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 and he falls off the stage. (laughs) He falls off the stage into the orchestra pit. Not just that he fell off the stage, but into the orchestra pit. And you hear the orchestra going, (laughs) because suddenly Jesus falls on your equipment. Yeah. You know? Hard to play the... Uh, hard to play the flute when Jesus lands on it. <laughs> and it's gr- the best part is, is that you see these people and it's like, I'm playing a hooker. I'm doing drugs. I'm half naked. I don't care about, it. oh my God, Jesus, are you okay? <laughs> Let me help you up, Jesus. Are you all right, Jesus? Jesus, can you go on? You can? Okay, great. I am a hooker. I don't care about Jesus. <laughs> and it's like, aw, all of these sinners have hearts of gold because they all helped out Jesus. Yes, they did. But I will say something about Jesus. He kept going because the show must go on. But I believe that was a Hallmark film, wasn't it? The Littlest Sinner? Yeah, yeah. yeah. The I'm Jesus sure. Must Go On. Yeah. A Hallmark original movie. So now jump ahead in time. Jump way ahead in time. Oh, April okay. 1st, 2018. Easter. Okay. So there was a lot of there was a lot of fear 
and controversy. Did so, you say 2013? No, 2018. I must have missed one. Did I say 2018? You said 2018, yeah. Booyah. Okay. Well, I mean, I do have oh, a headphone. Yeah. Boona. So there was a lot of fear and controversy surrounding this Easter because it was the first Easter without um, our beloved Nana. Yeah. And, and it was really depressing because we all didn't like Easter. We all didn't particularly care for Easter. Easter was just a time that we had a big dinner and got candy. Yeah. You know, and Nana would go all out and we'd be painting eggs and we'd have this huge, massive dinner that she somehow had been working on for two days and so much food and we would get together and and it was just it was always Easter was like always a big deal yeah. in that family. Nana and Papa and Easter and then Nana died and then it was coming up to Easter and Natasha would say, what are we doing for Easter? And then. Just there was this pain in the pit of our stomach, you know, yeah. there was just this pain. And I'm like, oh, God, what are we going to do? What are we going to do for Easter? And then suddenly everyone else starts asking that. Deanna's asking. Destiny's asking. Emerald's asking. What are we doing for dinner? So then we go to Papa. Right. And Papa and his uh, new boyfriend. Not so new. Not so new. Yeah, not so new. New to, new. Us. New to us. Yeah. Like a rerun you haven't seen. <laughs> yeah, was... it's new to us. It's yeah. not new to him. That's what NBC used to say about their reruns during the summer. If you haven't seen this episode, it's new to you. <laughs> uh-huh. yeah. That was their way of trying to get people to like reruns. So we go to Papa and... Uh, Papa, and they say, oh, well, we're not doing anything. We're just going to have a quiet uh, time at, at at our house with some ham and just hang out, and n- none of you are invited. Okay. He didn't say that, but it was, it was implied. Yeah, no, Deanna asked him, and sh- he said that he was going to be sitting there. He, he said that it's probably just going to be... Be me and my boyfriend. We're probably going to have some ham and just stay at home. You should ask your auntie what she's doing. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) So, yeah, and Dina was like, he implied that I wasn't invited to his ham. And I was like, okay. So then it fell on my fucking shoulders. Okay. Have you talked to him since about this? You know, I'm not my fucking mother. I was looking forward to not having to have all that stress because... My mom was gone, and I knew my dad wasn't going to do anything because my dad is not, like, I don't like celebrating holidays. I am not a part of that religion. Oh, okay, hold on. Could have said that better. I understood what you meant. Like, I threaten every single fucking year that we're not going to do Christmas. I'm not a Christian. I don't believe in Christ. I don't believe in, sorry, Jesus Christ, superstar. But I, seriously, I don't believe in this. I'm not a religious person. Why do I have to celebrate this? Because it's been forced upon me my entire life. And yeah. we continued that tradition with my kids because my mom was alive. Because what? Why? I don't believe in this shit. I shouldn't have to be forced to celebrate it. So I was really looking forward to not doing that for Easter. Right. Then I was kind of forced into it. So, so so we ended up having like a big dinner and and painting eggs and I was excited though yeah. because on Easter they were having yet another live musical on television but this time it was Jesus Christ Superstar and I was excited about it primarily because number 1 um on one of the biggest religious holidays NBC said, you know what we should do? We should air a live version of that musical that a shit ton of Catholics and Christians hate. Ah. On their on, on their most important day of the year, we should play a live version of the of the musical they all hate. <laughs> and so that that in and of itself was exciting, but wait, what made it even better is that John Legend? John Legend. John Legend portrayed Jesus. And I'm like, oh, you mean they're getting a black guy to play Jesus? Oh, my God. The hits just keep on coming. 
Yeah, I'm kind of interested in that. I'm kind of I want to see what kind of job he could do. It wasn't, it wasn't too bad. Yeah, it was on Hulu. I mean, it wasn't the it's original. It's on Hulu now. It wasn't it, the yeah. original. Yeah. Uh, and and I gotta say, what's her name? Who played the Mag- Mary Magdalene? Oh, Sarah Bareilles. Sarah Bareilles did a pretty decent job with uh, Mary Magdalene and my favorite song. So I can't complain there. Yeah. Yeah. So I was watching some of it, and, and and in the beginning, it was just me sitting there watching it and geeking out and getting all excited. You know what is really an experience? Hold on. I'm sorry. I don't mean to interrupt. No, it's okay. Bunny, I'm going to tell you what is really an experience. What? Steve loves, loves having an audience for things. So I do yeah. so much. He really does. Like He is an actor at heart, and that's why he loves story time so much. He likes putting himself out there and just performing for people. Right. And it's amazing to see, especially in our own home, because he gets ignored at home. Yeah. And I, I don't mean to be mean about this. I'm just being real. No, that's you know, true. We, we deal with him every single day, and we all have our own shit going. So he gets ignored a lot when he wants to say whatever about anything. And... So when he has people over and he has a captive audience, it's an amazing thing to watch. Because, <laughs> no, no, I'm serious. I'm serious. Yeah. Timmy does this all the time, especially on Saturdays when when we're not watching Supernatural. Because and suddenly he, Deanna's here and Destiny's here and Matt's here. And, and Matt Christian's loves to here. fucking talk. So <laughs> like he'll sit there and he'll listen to Steve. And then he'll go on this big old thing, too. And it's just amazing. because Steve Yeah, I have a whole up. group of new people that haven't heard all of my shit. And Steve just, and he gets louder and louder. And just like with his excitement as especially, it grows. And especially if like, I'm drinking. Especially <laughs> if he's drinking. And he'll, he'll be gesturing and he projects. And it's just this, I mean, it's amazing. It's incredible to watch. So basically, <laughs> so basically, that's what happened during Jesus Christ Superstar. Like I'm watching this thing, and I'm watching it by myself, and I'm super excited. And then eventually, Bella is is just, what the hell are you watching? I'm watching Jesus Christ Superstar, and she goes, "Oh, it's that thing you've been talking about." And I said, "Yeah, but here's the thing." And it just came to me. It was a light bulb. This was my Hamilton at your age. True. Mm. Like, like Bella's 12 and she loves Hamilton and she's obsessed with Hamilton and she's broken it down and she watches all these videos online of Hamilton. And then that musical Hamilton has led her to other musicals like uh, uh, Dear Evan Hansen and whoever is in the bathroom by himself. Uh, be More Chill. Be More Chill, that's the musical? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so, so, you know, this one popular musical has opened the door for a bunch of other things. And so basically that was me with Jesus Christ Superstar. So she sat down and she was watching it and she's like, who are these people? And I'm explaining who these people are. And then eventually, you know, other people finish eating. And and so Deanna's there and Destiny's there. And then eventually I got the majority of the house watching the live Jesus Christ Superstar. Yeah. And and so what I keep building up to is like, I'm just waiting for Alice Cooper. And she's like, Alice Cooper, who's that? And I'm like, Alice Cooper, he's a musician. He sang Schools Out for Summer. In the film Dark Shadows, Alice Cooper played Alice Cooper. And they're like, okay, yeah, no, that was that Johnny Depp movie. Yeah, Alice Cooper was the <laughs> ugly woman that the vampire had ever seen. And I'm like, yeah, Alice Cooper is portraying King Herod. And they're like, oh, that should be good. And I'm like, no, you have no idea. Yeah. So I'm waiting for commercial breaks, and I'm like, okay, let me get my phone. This is the original King Herod from the movie Jesus Christ Superstar, and they watch it, and they go, what the fuck <laughs> am I seeing? What is this? Oh, I loved it. I loved it. I, I, I thought it was such a... You know, that this Jesus Christ Superstar is just... It is just a, a stamp of its time, you know, in so many ways. And yeah. King Herod is a big one of them. You know, it's like, okay, finally we're getting to a big, broad musical song, you know? Yeah. So yeah. it was like se- very self mocking oh in its way. Okay. So um, do you remember City Slickers? Barely. Barely. Okay. Billy well, Crystal Jack well, well, that's good because this is kind of like a, bro- a broad stroke. So in City Slickers, 
they're doing the cattle run with a bunch of people, including two guys, a short, skinny guy and a big, fat guy who are obviously supposed to be Ben and Jerry. Yeah. (laughs) The fat Ben and Jerry, that's fucking King Herod. Yeah? Oh, shit. Yeah, I looked up King Herod because I looked up King Herod from Jesus Christ Superstar, and I'm like... Has this guy been in anything else? Because the only thing that I can picture him in is as this weird, fat, half-naked King Herod in Jesus Christ Superstar. Turns out he's had a long-ass fucking career. He was in Billy Madison, for shit's sake. Wow. Yeah, I IMD beat him. The guy's had a long-standing career. He's still making movies. This big, fat comedian guy and oh yeah he was in city slickers and city slickers too legend of curly's gold i'm assuming because i saw that twice in the theater and i can still not tell you what it was about (laughs) city slickers 2 was the men in black 2 of uh, pointless cash grabs yeah but i'm happy to see that uh that uh fat weird king herod was had a long career and was in other things you know I, I, I'm glad to hear that too. Yeah, uh, at least one of them made it out. Bella, Bella, can you pause it to come over here for a second? So then we watched the musical Jesus Christ Superstar, and that was really good. And then everyone's like, "Oh, so what are we doing next, Steve?" And I'm like, "Well, I got to show you some scenes from the original movie Jesus Christ Superstar." And so we stayed up until like crazy o'clock, me showing videos of Jesus Christ Superstar. And then we're watching the end of Jesus Christ Superstar live. And then Matt's like, oh, what's he going to do? Kill himself? And I'm like, yeah, Judas is going to kill himself. How's he going to do it? Well, in most of the musicals, he like hangs himself. Oh, how does he do that? Does he really hang himself? And I'm like, well, here's the thing. There's a longstanding history of people doing this play and actually fucking hanging themselves. Is there? Yeah, people have hung this. themselves. I remember growing up watching one of those one of those Fox shows, you know, like World's Wildest Videos. Yeah. And yeah, they they had a footage of a Mexican um, community theater production of Jesus Christ Superstar, and yeah, the Judas actually hangs himself and crushes his windpipe and almost dies. That's that's an artist. That's an artist. That's yeah, taking so, one from so, the team, so, man. Yeah. Can you imagine killing yourself in a play and actually almost killing yourself? Basically, yeah. oh, and that's the plot of Birdman. <laughs> yeah. Everything keeps coming back to Birdman. That's really weird. So so we stay up until like midnight or one o'clock and I'm drinking and showing everybody the original Jesus Christ Superstar. And I'm like, okay, now I've shown you everything. Everything important. That's all the important things. Oh shit, I didn't show you Simon. Simon. Okay. Okay, you have to see Simon. And and everyone's like, "What Simon?" And I'm like, "Well, in in the the live version that we saw, Simon is like Oh, right, right, right. Si- Simon the Zealot. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, "Okay, well, in the version we saw tonight on NBC, Simon was an attractive punkish guy with tattoos and half of his head shaved yeah in the movie he is a crazy homeless guy that you would you would cross the street to avoid yeah Mm -hmm. really crazy looking dude and i said and i said you have to see this you have to watch this just wait till he starts singing about the power and the glory and that was april 1st and to this day now what is it like uh Almost the end of April, and still Bella and I are saying, "Can you do? Can you do a Simon for me, Bella? You do it all the time. Can you do a Simon for me? Can you do it for uh, me? Maybe. Can you do a silly dance? Okay. Ha! That's not a silly dance, motherfucker. That's the cabbage patch. That's not silly. Um. See, I want it to be known that Steve is just dancing. He's not really trying to do a silly dance here. He could really be more interested. Eleanor, it's okay. You power, you glory. And then he's doing these arm gestures as he's doing it. Yeah. 
<laughs> up and to the side and up and to the okay. side and just I so need, crazy. I need the door open. I'm going to. And he's getting these on. notes. Yeah, it's hot as hell. Man. You get the power. You get the glow. I can't even do it. It's insane. Yeah, I'm at the yeah. But yeah, no, we stayed totally up until crazy that. o'clock watching Jesus Christ. Yeah, we stayed up until crazy o'clock watching Jesus Christ Superstar and then watching watching a Jesus Christ Superstar videos online. And then when I woke up with a hangover the next day, I said, we got to watch Jesus Christ Superstar for the podcast. Can't believe we <laughs> haven't done Jesus Christ Superstar for the podcast. We got to watch this. The interesting thing about the live musical version of Jesus Christ Superstar is the fact that oh, did you want out? they have done a lot of live action versions of plays on TV, but up until this point, there's never been an audience. Really? Yeah, so when they did Grease Live, when they did The Sound of Music Live, when they did The King and I Live, when they did A Christmas Story Live, when they did Hairspray Live, it was always this big, huge, massive, empty soundstage. And this was the first time that, that a, a TV station said, hey, so we're doing this musical. What if we have an audience? <laughs> Film before a live studio audience. And it was like a big game changer because suddenly we have an audience and the audience is cheering and the audience is screaming. And also the audience were sometimes dicks. Because <laughs> the audience is just there, like we're really excited to see this. Oh my God, it's John Legend! Ah! So sometimes they'd be screaming for like no reason other than they're close to a famous dude. Oh man! But uh, but it, it's a completely different experience watching a musical live when there's actually people to respond to it. Anyway, it's it's pretty good. Yeah. So. So, yeah. So, long story longer. Uh huh. That's why I absolutely love this movie and all of its faults, of which there are a number. Like how painfully 70s this is. Yes. And that's, that's why I'm saying it's kind of like a, just a stamp in time. Yeah. Yeah. This is a perfect 1970s stamp. What's the buzz? Tell me what's happening. What's the buzz? Tell me what's happening. This is way too fucking 70s. This is way yeah. too fucking 70s. And then there's the entire opening sequence where a bus full of unwashed hippies prepares for an interactive disco version of the Bible. Yeah. It's like, Jesus Christ, keep on trucking, guys. Yeah. Suck it to me. But it was kind of worth it to see how they were as they were getting back on the bus at the end. Yeah. I didn't mind it. It was the overture. It was, a, it was a fun way of saying, okay, we are in a play. Here's where the play is set, you know? Yeah. What the but fuck were on the, Fadges, not, the Pharisees' heads? I have no fucking idea. But um, uh, Jesus does not get on the bus. No. At the end. Because he's dead. Yeah. Jesus, hella dead at age 32. <laughs> or 33, I'm not sure. What? So. Uh, you know what? That doesn't fit. Why didn't he die at 27? Why are you here? Oh, because he wasn't into music or heroin. Yeah. So. Uh -huh. Jesus Christ Superstar, the movie, it's old and outdated, and at times it's painfully awkward to watch, but I love it for all of its flaws. So here are some stats for this film. 1973 musical film based on the successful Broadway musical. The film was directed by ironically named Norman Jewison. Nice. Who also directed the legendary award-winning movies Moonstruck, Agnes of God, Fiddler on the Roof, and of course, the Oscar award-winning best picture film, Rollerball. Rollerball. I loved Rollerball. I really like the yeah. original. It's a little draggy, I know, but yeah. it's a nice but when you're thinking sci fi What? Yeah, but when you're thinking Norman Jewison, you don't think like Moonstruck? What's that? Who starred in that? No idea. Yeah. Fiddler on the Roof? No one has any memory of that. You immediately go to Rollerball. Yes. Yeah, that's just a fact. It's science. 
The film stars angel-voiced anorexic hippie skeleton Ted Neely <laughs> as Jesus H. Christ and the real star of the musical, Carl Boom Boom Anderson, who plays Judas is Scary Guy. Yes. Here are some fun facts about this film. Jesus is killed in the film Django Unchained. I thought Jesus and Judas were in it, but Judas has, had already died of, of, of whatever. So it was only uh, Jesus? Yeah, it was only, it was Jesus, but it was also, um, shit. Okay, well, what's the name of that stunt woman who worked on? Oh, Zoe, Zoe something. Zoe Deschanel. Zoe Possibly. Bell. There you go. <laughs> I was really close, which is weird. But yeah, Zoe, it's Zoe Bell, Jesus, and some other person. It's a cameo, and, and yeah, Jesus is shot by um, Django in a bathtub. I, I love her in um, Grindhouse. <laughs> oh, yeah, me too. Hold on, let me, me give too. you something else. Um, Hold on, I'll give you something else. So, yeah, that's a fun cameo. Jesus actually met and married one of King Herod's backup dancers, and they're still married. They're still together. Really? Yeah, I don't know which one. I don't know which one, but one of them. Judas is... Judas! <laughs> Jesus. Damn. That, that was cold. It was also real accurate. <laughs> I'm not doubting the veracity of your <laughs> accurateness. Oh, now you think it's funny? Yeah. yeah. The story of Jesus and Judas. <laughs> Judas is, I because I put Judas in all caps for some reason when I was doing these notes. So I really felt I needed to punch it. I don't yeah. know why he, Judas is in all caps, but Judas Because he arrested. was fucking pretty awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Judas is actually arrested in the first ever song sung on oh Cop Rock. Oh. Yeah, he was in he was in episode 1, scene 1, song 1 of Cop Rock. They burst into this house where people are doing drugs and the drug dealer is like Jesus. <laughs> so it was totally him. Judas, and I did not know this, Judas yeah. had a number two, number three, number three. Judas had a number three hit song in 1986. Really? What was in 1986, that? he had a hit song that reached number three in the Billboard charts. It was a duet with a singer slash actress no. named Gloria Loring. The song is called Friends and Lovers. I heard it twice today and have no recollection of it whatsoever. Oh, shit. That, we're going to have to find out on that. I am fucking curious as hell now. Yeah, no, the song's on YouTube. I looked at it, and uh, and I, I listened to it, and I heard it twice. And then finally, like, like Natasha comes in, because she was outside. She came in, and she said, what the hell are you listening to? And I'm like, well, uh, it this is Judas and some angry middle-aged white woman who wants no. to speak to the store manager. <laughs> and apparently they had a hit song in 1986, but I swear to God, I haven't heard it. It, it sounded just like pointless background music, adult, easy listening crap that yeah. came out in 1986. Like this could have been the love song from romancing the stone yeah you know like some song that played in the background while you were at the mall shopping at jc penny's and yeah i i i listened to a lot of music in 1986 i swear to god i never heard this fucking okay, song before them, uh, in my bathroom there's a nail cleaner. yeah we'll grab that too and here is an interesting yeah, yeah, fact. Here is yeah, a bizarre, yeah, interesting fact. In 1992, Judas married a woman. Uh, really interesting. Maha one of Muhammad Ali's ex-wives. Really? One of? We have. Yeah, I looked it up. He has like three. He had like three or four. 
But gays are ruining the sanctity of marriage. Gay, no. Yeah, gays are ruining the ruining the sanctity of marriage. Now see who gets married in the new reality show, The Bachelorette. <laughs> this season, we allow a black to star. <laughs> so yeah, Judas married one of Muhammad Ali's ex-wives. Good, wow. good for good for Judas. I mean, if you're yeah, gonna marry an ex-wife, stop. You, you can't go. Uh, you can't get much now, better than Muhammad Ali. Well with your, uh, with I, 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 I am in total agreement of that. Yeah. The majority of the cast of this film was from the uh, the Broadway production, except for Pontius Pilate and King Herod. Originally, Ben Vereen from Pippin and Roots and Roots 2, The Rootening. Yeah. And Roots 3, Revenge of the Roots. And Roots 4, The Roots Take Manhattan. Yes. Originally, Ben Vereen was supposed to be Judas, but he got sick, so they got Cop Rock. <laughs> now, Jesus! Jesus! Yes. That's an exclamation, meaning I can't believe this. Jesus! But now, next, I'm going to be talking about Jesus. So, Jesus. Jesus! Yes. They originally wanted like a big star at the time. She's trying to get these things. I'm trying to keep them away from her. But now, because she wants these I'm things, does she? The file. Okay. Does she also get this? Yeah, I know. Okay, so I was fifty percent right. But she's cutting up this thing you guys are going to use to paint the nails on. So I'm also trying to keep her away from this. No, no, no. Let go of me. You can't cut into this. I know it sucks not getting your way, doesn't it? Yeah, it sucks. <laughs> yeah, way. So they originally wanted like a big star to be Jesus. Yeah. But but a big star in 1973. So they had two big names. Okay? Okay. They had two big names for Jesus and that they actually tried to get to star in this. Number 1 and this is all true. Number okay. one, David Cassidy. David Cassidy. Um, wow. Why? Yeah, really I, think about. It. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm having a hard time. I'm having a hard time processing David Cassidy as Judas. No, as Jesus. As Jesus. Uh, yeah, in, in either one, but definitely not Judas. Uh, okay. Well, then hold on to your hats because there were two people, remember? Okay. Mickey Dolenz. Oh, my Lord. From the fucking monkeys. Why do you hate God? Why do yeah. you hate God? <laughs> I imagine Norman Jewison is like, you know what? If we're going to be making this controversial film, let's just make it as controversial as possible. Uh, as if, as the part of, uh, like, if I'd be making this now, like, okay, if we're going to be making this film controversial, let's make it real controversial. Uh, Jesus, let's see if we can get George W. Bush. Yeah. <laughs> For Judas, uh, Louis Farrakhan. Yeah. Louis Farrakhan. No, how about this, Caitlyn Jenner? Caitlyn Jenner. Okay. Yeah. Wait, you need to go somewhere else, Bella. Yeah, for Mary that. Magdalene, let's just. I don't uh, know why you didn't do that the first time I told you. Should. Let's get Courtney Love. Uh huh. Okay. Nothing. Okay. And they the rest of the cast can be flamboyantly gay people making out with Thank each you. other. <laughs> As they read passages from the Bible. Yeah, if we're going to be contro if we're going to do this controversial musical, let's just get as controversial as possible. Let's see if we we can give an abortion Mary scene an abortion yeah. during the musical in the temple. In the temple. Yeah, in the temple would be perfect. But thankfully, I'm assuming Norman Jewison is just working on a film, and then she he's just going okay. So we need to. Uh, Oh snap! This fucking sucks. <laughs> so they just wait, 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 wait. Okay, okay. How about this though? How about we we break the temple scene? Okay, 
into into like li- little dioramas, okay? So that so that they're, they're more walking through a museum, and then in each one there's like a tableau of where in the Bible they actually perform abortions, and yeah. we'll have a reference to the no, Bible verse, the you know, all of that. Where somebody's beating their slave, and we'll have a reference to the dead. Bible. Yeah. Yeah. Ow! Stop yes. stabbing me. Your nails. Okay, thank you. Now please stop stabbing me. Who can get us the rights to this? I say we do it. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. So they, they scrapped David Cassidy and Mickey Dolenz and they went with living sexy crypt keeper Ted Neely. Yeah. As Jesus because he did the original Broadway version. The musical was originally written by Andy Lloyd Webber. This is Technically his third musical, but really his second. Yeah. The first musical he wrote is called The Likes of Us. He wrote it in 1975, and it was performed for the first time in 2005. Really? Okay. So in my mind, his first musical doesn't count. I would would agree. Because he wrote the musical and then it took 40 yeah, years for it to be performed. Older, that doesn't count. That's not I your first musical. No. Else than on myself. Yeah. He's, he's so, trying to pull the wool. Onto my shit. Yeah. Yeah. So the second musical he wrote, but the first real musical he wrote, is a bizarre amalgam of a musical called Joseph and His Amazing Technicolor oh, dream. dream Coat. I remember that. Yeah, I remember that. And one. after. Th- and after that plays vague success, uh, a- Andy Lloyd Webber said, hey, so I'm getting a little bit of success with this Joseph musical. What if for my next musical, now this is crazy, hear me out. What if I wrote a musical about the Bible that doesn't suck ass? <laughs> Now, how how about this? We do another musical like Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat, except this time, it's good. <laughs> Boom! That's how we got Jesus Christ Superstar. To be clear, uh, uh, okay, uh, Christians and Catholics, a number of Christians and a number of Catholics, absolutely hate this musical because it's the Bible. From the point of view of Judas, yeah. number one. Yeah. Number two, Judas is seen as kind of a good guy, but he who sees Jesus as a normal man, as a human, and he was kind of chosen by God to turn on Jesus, and so it's not really his fault. He was just used. Right. He says that in the musical. And... Uh, then later, to sing the title song, Jesus Christ Superstar, he appears as an angel. Comes well, down. more literally, he, he appears as Lucifer. Okay. Okay, does yeah. Coming down on the morning star, yeah. Yeah. Nice. Well, okay, but you know what? He's still a fucking angel. Yes, he is. Okay. That was but, a good. But that that was a good specific little, thank you for, for that. Well, I mean, it's the truth though. Yeah. Lucifer was an angel. Yeah. Yeah. I I, I saw. Anyways, dog, I'm dog sorry. Dog. Go on. So, it, it, people are, are are really upset. Also, there's the fact that a lot of Christians are upset because he didn't add the resurrection. It just ends with him dying. Oh, yeah. he's dead. That's sad. Bye, guys. So, but it, zombie well, I, I I always took that that for me, where where we actually do the Jesus Christ superstar and Lucifer comes down from the morning star, he that is the resurrection. That's okay. that's in that's in essence the kind of story that they kind of play around with, where the three days Jesus was dead, he went down to hell, and some. I don't remember the full fucked upness of it all, but that was kind of a representation of that. There was a give and take between Jesus and Lucifer, and then Jesus 
lit up and got all glowy. Yeah. <laughs> you know? I watched, I, she got all glowy. I watched a really good uh, Do you want specific nails movie nails? about a TV show about the history of Lucifer. So what happens is Lucifer got banished from heaven and opened his own jazz club. Uh-huh. Where he solves a different mystery every week. It's not even a jazz club, dude. It's not even a jazz club. It's mm. just like a Yeah, it's just a it's club. It's a jazz blues club. Well more it's blues like a jazz. It's a piano really. bar, really, because there's yeah. a piano that <laughs> it's a piano bar. Yeah. Lucifer's he, he, losing oh, cred by the second here. <laughs> yeah. He opened he opened up the jazz bar with the guy with a uh, Ryan Gosling because he he saved jazz. Uh huh. Yes, he did. Ryan Gosling saved jazz. He saved, yeah, he saved jazz from the those evil blacks. Uh huh. But to be clear, it's it's confusing that Christians and Catholics especially hate Jesus Christ Superstar because Norman Jewison, the director managed to show Jesus Christ Superstar to the Pope at the time. He, uh, Pope Paul the VI. Uh-huh, okay. And he showed his... He, and he's like, oh, so uh, Catholics hate my movie? Fine. Well, I'd like to speak to your manager then. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, I didn't write that in the podcast. I came up with that just now, and that's really good. That's basically I what that speak comes to. Your to. Supervisor. Did they have the white woman haircut? It's a me, I'm a Pope. Uh, the Pope is upset because somebody touched his spaghetti. <laughs> hey, I'm a Pope. Uh, Buca de Beppo. So. Really? Yeah. Pray go. So, Are you, uh, so the Pope sees the movie. Yeah. yeah, I stole a lot of that from. It's all good. I stole a lot of that from Conan. Yeah, I figured. That's so, nice. I steal from the best. <laughs> so you're gonna plagiarize, plagiarize from the best. Yeah. So Pope Paul the VI saw the movie and he's like, I don't know if I'm supposed to say this, but. I fucking love your movie. <laughs> it, was, it was the Pope's belief that, like, hey, regardless of whether people think this is evil, this is the greatest uh, um, recruitment tool ever. Yeah, really? People are going to see this movie and go, oh, man, no, this is awesome, and then come to church. Like, this is a great go ahead film and wipe your ass for us. <laughs> this is going to be good. This shit will be good for us. Nice. Yeah, and that's really good. The Pope loved this movie. And yet still, there are fucking Catholics who hate this movie. And regardless of the reviews, many Christians and Catholics call this film evil and blasphemous. In fact, the former Phoenix, Arizona bishop, known as uh, Bishop Thomas O'Brien, said yeah. once that this film was, quote, outright blasphemy. He said Whoa. that to a young Reverend Steve on a bus from Phoenix, Arizona to Denver, Colorado to go see a uh, Pope JP the two, which was the last cool Pope. Yeah. So going to is so Pope uh, Bishop O'Brien said that the movie Jesus Christ Superstar was outright blasphemy. Of course, he said that in like 1991. That was before he was arrested for fleeing the scene after hitting and killing a 43-year-old man. Yeah. He was the first U.S. bishop to be convicted of a felony. <laughs> and then, in 2002, a grand jury is investigating the, 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 the Catholic Church of Phoenix for um sexual abuse by priests yeah and bishop o'brien was facing decades in jail and he finally admitted to covering up allegations of sexual abuse and sheltering priests and he admitted to this only as part of a plea deal where he was guaranteed no jail time wow that was in 2002 
And uh, yeah, the guy kind of got off scot-free for having numerous priests molest young children and then covering it all up and then uh, hiding the priests away from people. And also, he killed a guy. Yeah. And ironically enough, the guy that he killed, the 43-year-old guy that he killed, and then he fled the scene, the guy that he killed was a carpenter. Oh. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, uh, the, no, but it wasn't. This this couldn't be, the only way this could be more ironic was if Alanis Morissette was also in the car. <laughs> yeah. Singing about rain for wedding day. True. That's some serious irony. <laughs> the Catholic bishop running over and killing a poor carpenter. <laughs> God, that is a sign of God. That is a sign of God. This, this is the divine hand, you know? The yeah, divine uh -huh. hand coming down from the clouds and spanking a bishop. <laughs> I think technically it's beating a bishop. Yeah. So you would think that the Bishop Thomas O'Brien story would be over after killing a man and becoming the first U.S. bishop to be convicted of a felony. And then uh, admitting in 2002 before a grand jury that he covered up allegations of sexual abuse and sheltered priests. You would think that this would be the end of this story. Yeah. It's not. So anyway, Bishop O'Brien is back in the news. Really? How is he? Uh, well, did, did he get uh, my muffin basket? <laughs> well, he's back in court recently. In the end of 2017, he was accused of sexually molesting a young boy from 1977 to 1982, and this case is still going on in court. That's almost as long as we are apart age-wise. Why do you keep fucking with me like this? Uh, it's fun. How do you like being made uncomfortable, Steve? I'm being made uncomfortable by you because you're pointing out the extreme age difference in us. I'm making you uncomfortable by saying things like, I love you and you're a sweetheart. And that's less <laughs> relevant? You're right. I'm sorry. I Are, Am I being made uncomfortable? Yes, I am. Are you being made uncomfortable? Yes, you are. We're both being made uncomfortable. The reason how we're being made uncomfortable is not, like, relevant. Sure. Like, it doesn't make it better or worse or more acceptable or less acceptable. We're both being made uncomfortable. Okay. <laughs> I, love it's, my, um, I do it's... love my husband. It's amazing how much this podcast is a an ode to our future divorce. Painfully <laughs> personal look at my life. Yes. You make it say. I know, I know, but also like just so much of it comes out. Like someone could listen to my podcast having never met me personally. And then when they meet me. Like, like That's someone could have listened That's to my podcast. True. No, someone could listen to my podcast and then I'm we're sorry. both at a restaurant and they're on the other side of the restaurant and they just start hearing a family arguing and a baby screaming and throwing things and Maxwell having a fit and Bella going, oh. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> And then Emerald, it, and I'm like, Emerald, can you help out? But Emerald's busy taking selfies and doing duck faces. And, 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 duck faces? And then suddenly, like, the person on the other side of the restaurant goes, Steve? Is that Reverend Steve? <laughs> oh, my God. That, that's, that's, that's Eleanor. I've heard her yell so much on this one podcast. She yeah. called the Pope on it. <laughs> Okay, but you know what? Uh, you invited this along, Steve. I did. I don't write in my blog, so I need some some other uh, opening into my personal life. Yes. You just have to invite the public in, huh? Yeah. 
Let them see. Yep. She's not always truthful. So anyway, what I'm trying to say is, Sweet Home Alabama is a horrible fucking song. Agreed. Yes, it is. And it's weird that it's so popular in our American society. And I find myself singing it along with it on the radio, and then I change the channel because I'm like, fuck! You yeah, got yeah. Me. I think what it is, like, oh, I love Sweet Home Alabama. Sweet. Like, that's freaking messed up! Yeah, Sweet Home Alabama is ingrained into people upon birth. It's, it's the same way American that, like... American tradition. Yeah, the same way that, like, a four-month-old knows Mickey Mouse. Yes. The same way that like a like a one year old knows, okay, that's Superman. Uh, there are some things that are just uh, embedded. Uh, and Sweet Home Alabama is one of them. I don't know about the, the Superman. The important thing is is that Bishop O'Brien is in court because he's accused of sexually molesting a young, under, wildly underage boy from 1977 to 1982. And also, I'm not sure if you know how this works, but bishops, a bishop is in charge of an entire city, an entire area, an entire diocese. And they go all over the place doing uh, masses and, and blessings and stuff. But they have one church which is their home base, their base of operations. And that home base for Bishop Thomas O'Brien was my school. So there's a good chance that my school was home of numerous molestations. Um, I think it would be fair to assume, yes. Yeah, so... So that's fun. This guy is an asshat, and he deserves to rot in jail. So fingers crossed. Fingers crossed that he ends up in jail. Yes. Like I always say, shum shum slippity dop. Yes. Thank you. Which is from and Corinthians. That is, yes. Yeah, and that is all that I have for this episode, except for one last thing. Next week on the podcast. We're going to be talking about uh, the 1963 uh, alien movie with a twist, The Day Mars Invaded Earth. Yes. We're going to be talking about Steve Burns, the original host of Blue's Clues. Okay. We're going to be talking about uh, the WWE in Saudi Arabia. That's going to be fun. I'm going to be getting really personal about... About a, a, a about a, a an article of food, okay. I might have to be alone while I talk about this part. What food? I'm not gonna mention what it. Food? I'm not mentioning it what right food, now. Steve? No. What food, Steve? No. I will show you what food it is if you don't mention it out loud. Uh, right now. Oh. Okay. And uh, yeah, we got a lot of exciting things planned. For next week. But here's the thing. Yes. Oftentimes here on the Pope on Film podcast, we will cover cult movies and movies that aren't very well known and and cult movies and and bizarre movies and, and begotten. Yes. Took up a whole episode. That was impressive. But. Ow. Uh, what I like to do is I like to occasionally throw in a really popular movie that I don't necessarily want to see, right. but that I think will garner clicks and listens and bring people into the podcast that wouldn't normally listen to the podcast. What I'm trying to say is, Bunny, next week we're doing Fifty Shades of Grey. Fuck you. I know you might not be excited Fuck for you. that, buddy. Neither am I. <laughs> but let me tell you something. A lot more people might uh, are probably going to be listening to that stupid episode. Yes. Agreed. So in that in that light. Hmm? Uh, I didn't hear you. You blacked out a bit. Sorry. It, so we can file them. 
Also, it's a good time to watch that because Fifty Shades of Grey, the movie, is based on Fifty Shades of Grey, the book that originally started out as just erotic fan fiction for Twilight, which we have also done on the podcast. Yes. And and it it I, I should have drawn a line there. <laughs> yeah. But you didn't, so we're yeah. here. Next week we're doing Fifty Shades of Grey. Check the cough cough. It's already there waiting for you. Okay. Uh, I'm not excited about it either, but I am kind of excited about the day Mars invaded Earth. I mean, if the episode is going to be about Fifty Shades of Grey, then it doesn't matter what the day Mars invaded Earth is about. It's already going to be an amazing film, right? That is true. Yeah. So suddenly the day Mars invaded Earth is the greatest movie in the world. The film could be three and a half hours of Bruce Springsteen taking a shit on a dead cat. <laughs> and I'd be and and I'd be here next week saying it had its moments. Yeah. Definitely better than Christian Grey. That's the that's the the guy character. Yeah. Oh, by Shades. by the way though, I have heard that um God's Not Dead 3 is actually kind of good. Really? In that Christian mingle sort of way where it doesn't really seem to particularly like Christians. Really? Yes. I'm so I'm so blown away by that that you're gonna have me saying really in a high in a G above high C. <laughs> like Jesus H. Christ. Yeah. Really? Did he confirm yeah. that his middle name is H? Yes, H as in Harold. heck of a tap dancing. Heck of a tap dancer. He, yeah, heck of a tap. No, heck of a tap dancing. Jesus, Harold heck of a tap dancing Christ. I, no, I've explained this before. It stands for Harold. It's Jesus, Harold, Christ. Because okay, God so the Father, fine. God the Father is Harold, as in the Lord's Prayer. You know, Harold be thy name. Harold. So, so are you trying to say that Jesus can't tap dance? Um. Why would yeah, that's what that? I thought. He, he he could probably tap dance. I don't know how good with the macrame he would be anymore. That's a good point. Yeah. But that's next week. Next week we're doing Fifty Shades of Grey. Tell your female friends. <laughs> that's not sexist. Oh, okay. Tell your female friends and possibly your gay f male friends. Yes, I, I will. I will. That's have not. To prepare. That's not. That's not sexist. That's honest. Yes. Yes, it is. Yeah. So that's next week, and I'm actually kind of excited about next week. Um, I've never seen Fifty Shades of Grey before, Amber. Can you walk me through it? Is it going to be okay? Uh, Emerald's the one to ask, not Amber. Yeah. You didn't see Fifty Shades I of Grey? I saw it in the movie theater. That's why I asked you. <laughs> that's why I asked you. Oh. Uh, like you're probably gonna have to watch it with me and explain everything that happens. You're probably gonna hate it and what? make a lot of jokes. What? That's not me. I don't know who you think I am, Amber. I'm super positive. Uh, I'm gonna love it. In fact, just because you said that, I'm gonna like go into this gushing. The background story kind of. I don't know. Kind of stupid. Look, all I know is that um. Natasha has refused to help me, despite the fact that she also saw it in the theater. I was uh -huh. forced against my will. Everyone else cried, and I was just kind of like, Ugh. "Look, okay." People look, were crying I've in never, Fifty Shades of Grey. Really? I have <laughs> never. Probably because it's so terrible. Hmm. I've never read the books. Okay, uh, my sister-in-law forced me into watching it for her birthday because um, I don't know reasons. She knew I wasn't going to watch it any other way. Okay. And, uh, so she forced me into watching this, and um, I I am a I I know about the lifestyle. Okay. Okay. So when it comes to you're, you're not giving us news, okay? <laughs> right. Well, I'm just saying, like when it comes to Fifty Shades of Grey, it's a uh, it's a bit upsetting for me. Because and, and that's that's, that's what, what I've heard, yeah. This is why you don't turn bad fan fiction into movies, especially movies that, or, well, bad fan fiction into books, 
uh, I, as a person who is in a fandom who who creates fan fiction, right? I also create fan fiction, and I've read my fair share of terrible, terrible fan fiction. Literally, I have written. Uh, I don't know if Steve has ever told you about my my writing, but there's a challenge, a monthly challenge that we do. That's called Coldest Hits. Right. And I have not. You your your challenge is to make the worst fan fiction possible, or okay. I guess to get the least amount of attention for your fan fiction. Now, that being said, I that's read, a very Woody and shit right there. Yeah, it is. Yes. And it's so fun. No. That being said, um, I read a fan fiction that was so ter- <laughs> so terrible. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I have written a uh, coldest hits fan fiction that uh, it <laughs> involves marshmallow cannibalism. Okay. Marshmallow cannibalism. Because, okay. Because the word gooey should never be in porn. <laughs> okay. 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 Now let me just stop you there for a second. I don't know where you're going with this. But can I sell the rights to Troma? I'm sorry. Oh, oh, what's Troma Company? Yeah, Troma Pictures. They did uh, Toxic Avengers, biggest one. Yeah, the Toxic Avengers. You want to sell my my marshmallow cannibalism rape fic to to Troma? Fuck yeah! It would be pretty goddamn easy, I think. I honestly think it would be pretty damn easy. Okay, all I'm saying is that. He oh, he he turns somebody into marshmallow, <laughs> rapes them and eats them. Okay, and I have a sequel, and all of my fan fiction friends know me for all of my marshmallow cannibalism. Now, um, I wrote <laughs> a no, it's an Oregon Trail AU. Yeah, there are marshmallows and there's cannibalism there too, like because all because bad fan fiction. Somebody put the word gooey. Oh, during, the, yeah. during their sex scene, like uh, that doesn't belong. One of these things is not like the other. Okay, so answer me this question. Okay, so my whole point of that was that don't turn bad fan fiction into popular books, into a popular movie, because when you get into BDSM, that it can be fucking dangerous. It's one thing to write sex scenes, yeah. but you add BDSM and shit like that into it. It can get dangerous for the public who doesn't know what the fuck they're doing. Yeah. Okay. Well, well, I'm going to Fifty Shades this. And so I'm already rewriting your books into books. Well, I'm already rewriting your story into a popular series of romance novels that I can then send sell to Hollywood. I'm calling them in my head right now Fifty Shades of Gooey. <laughs> I really think I've got the next hit for uh, uh, Midwestern Housewives. I hate you so much right now. Sex in aisle five. Okay, so so uh, answer me this question: How yes. does a marshmallow die of dysentery? Uh, well, I didn't actually have anybody die of dysentery. <gasps> but that's the whole part of Oregon Trail. Uh, it's dying I'm of dysentery. About the fucking game. I'm talking about actual Oregon Trail. Well, oh, okay. Well, never mind. But now, Bunny, that I'm looking back at this episode. Yes. I gotta say, um, this has been a pretty good episode. This has been a damn good episode. Yes, it has. There you go. There you go. I got a damn. I got a damn. You know what? He usually says damn good when I'm involved, Steve. What does that tell you? It tells me that I should get rid of you before you take over the podcast. I don't want your podcast. <laughs> this has been a damn good podcast. I concur. Yes. So until next week, I am Bunny Williams. And I am Reverend Steve. And on behalf of. Eleanor and Bella and Natasha and Amber and everybody else. I just want to say thanks for listening and we will see you next week, you godless heathens. And you douche waffles and poopy tits. 
do 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 more effective do 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 do